Although many of us don't really like to admit it, riding mountain bikes is dangerous. And if you're an experienced rider, you've been around for a few years, you've probably seen people out of trail get injured or yourselves been injured. I know I have. This time last year, I got hurt out at the Andes Pacifico and I needed the other uh, help of other people to get me out of a bit of a sticky situation. So here's a few tips on how to try and stay safe on the trails. I think the first part of this is knowing your riding skill level. Now, definitely on GMB, we do encourage people to send it and do those things, try and push themselves. And I do, when I was coaching, I would definitely try to get people to push it a little bit, but it's really playing a game of sort of chances, trying to keep your risks to a reasonable level. If you're the type of rider who's always trying stuff above their level every single time you ride or go in, you know, way beyond your level, then eventually you will be crashing probably quite a lot. And a lot of crashes can lead to injuries, of course. Uh, so definitely try and play those risks so that you're not doing it all the time. And the same goes for following someone that's faster. We do recommend that quite a lot. But if that person you're trying to follow is way faster than you, it means you're gonna be taking quite a lot of risks outside your comfort level to try and keep up with them. So it can be done, but this is something to be careful of. Uh, the final point when it comes to actually riding your bike, I would say is in my situation, in my experience, twice I've been injured because I've been riding when I was tired, both actually in races. So you sort of feel like you have to do it. You know, you, already, you are always gonna be pretty, you know, on your limit of fitness. And Andy Pacifico and another race called trans I did probably six, seven years ago, I was riding, trying to ride as fast as I could when I knew I was fatigued. And I had thought about trying to slow it down a little bit, but just in that sort of heat of the battle, I rode over my head and I've got injured twice. So separated shoulder from the one and uh, compartment syndrome in my thigh from the other. So two, you know, serious-ish injuries from riding over my level when I was tired and I probably shouldn't have been. I've ridden mountain bikes since the mid 90s, so an awful long time now. And I've sort of seen or heard stories of friends and friends of friends getting into sticky situations. So I've known you know, a few people that have broken bones and got themselves out of the forest. Uh, someone who's broken their leg and driven themselves to the hospital. Even a broken neck drove himself out of the trail. <laughs> Uh, but you might be in a situation where you can't evacuate yourself, so you need some way of getting in touch with emergency services and hopefully they can get to you. Uh, so, a, you know, a mobile phone or a riding buddy is, you know, something that can really help you out of a situation. And I've been in that myself. I do quite like riding by myself. And in those situations, you do need to let someone know where you are. Now, there are ways of going into that with a bit more help from technology, which I'll talk about in a minute. But the, you know, the easiest way is just to tell a loved one or you know, family member, someone like that, where you're going and your expected time of return. So if you're not back, they can you know, raise an alarm and get someone out to try and find you. In the situation of minor injuries and you're by yourself, it might be best just to get yourself out of the trail. Now, this is decision has got to be made by yourself personally. Uh, you know, something like a broken wrist, I guess is, you know, depends how bad it is, of course, but maybe down the lower end scale of yourself, it might be best to try and walk yourself out of there. Uh, I've definitely been in situations by myself when I've fallen off and given myself quite a bad cut on my knee. I thought, wow, that was a bit of a wake up call. And you know, much worse than that, I could have been in a problem. So it's trying to make sure you've got an escape plan for your ride. Wearing the appropriate riding gear can make a difference between getting injured and not when you're in the situation where you're hitting the deck. I will always wear a helmet if I'm riding my bike off-road. That's just non-negotiable for me. If I've forgotten my helmet, I just won't ride. Of course, you could wear a full face helmet as well. Um, that's up to your own discretion when to wear one of those. Uh, things like knee pads, I will always wear them unless I'm going for a cross-country ride. Same with the gloves, I almost always wear them because that's the first thing that hits the deck and ripping over your hands is not a nice thing to do. The list obviously goes on for appropriate riding gear. Uh, eyewear can protect your eyes from getting mud in, but also branches, things like that. If you think about wearing tougher trousers, so tougher shorts or uh, trousers for riding downhill where there's more potential for you to fall off and slide, that's just gonna stop you from getting quite so ripped up. A uh, big thing to think about again is in winter, uh, appropriate thermal and waterproof kit because a small incident where you maybe you know get a little injury can get quite serious if you're getting cold and you're stuck by yourself. A first aid kit, whilst it might not be practical to carry everywhere, I always keep one in the car. 
But if you're going on bigger rides or going into remote places, they are essential. When we went on our Patagonia ride last year, that I love talking about all the time, because it's so good. We were in a really remote area and uh, Gabo, our guide, took care of all that stuff. So he had a pretty comprehensive first aid kit in his backpack. Modern technology can definitely help you out in an emergency situation, like having your mobile phone in your pocket, being able to ring someone or ring the emergency services. I'm told that uh, 999 in the UK, that will work even if you don't have phone signal. I've never had to test that one out myself. Some modern devices have a live tracking feature. My Garmin does, so I used this last year for my winter solstice ride, where I rode by myself through the middle of the night, uh, in the middle of nowhere as well, so it's quite important to do that. Uh, it gives you a link that you can then share with anyone you want to and they'll see your progress is exactly where you are. Uh, mobile phones do this as well. You can have that find my friends thing on Apple iPhones. Only thing to be worried about there is it draining your battery uh, in the background and then once it's dead, obviously you can't use it anymore. So good thing with the Garmin is it's got a decent battery for doing that sort of thing. Pre-planning can be a big part of staying safe as well. So knowing the route you're gonna ride if you're going for an epic ride and sharing that with someone else. So I like to use Kamut, one of my partners here at GMBN. So I know the type of terrain I'm likely to be riding. I can even look for escape routes if I think maybe I've bitten off more than I, ch I can chew or in case of emergency, maybe a shortcut to get back to civilization. Uh, Always be aware that that might work when you've got signal, but you can download those maps to use offline so that if you are out somewhere and you run out of signal, you can still find out where you are. In my experience on the epic rides, probably the most dangerous parts is any road sections you might encounter. So I try and avoid those if I can, or be prepared if you are gonna ride on the road. You might need lights or some high vis stuff. Something really worth considering is getting some first aid training. I've had it for probably the last 10 years from my skills coaching days to doing what I do now on GMBN. And I've had to top it up probably three times in the last 10 years. Whilst I'm definitely no expert on uh, first aid training, it's probably good to know something and at least know like the ABC in the UK, they call it um, airways, breathing, circulation, so that in an emergency situation, you have some idea what to do and can potentially help someone out. There's a few other ways that technology can help you out in emergency situations. Now, this is built into my POC helmet. There's a RECO system. So this is an avalanche rescue system, a little sticker that's basically inside the helmet. You may have seen these used uh, in the snow where people get stuck in avalanches and it's just a way of finding people. So these are mainly used in ski resorts. There's a big list on the RECO website actually of where they're used. And you can buy them as aftermarket stickers as well. So if you ever get lost in the outdoors, that might just save you. This Garmin Edge device has incident detection. You can get this on other things as well. Specialized doing an Angie. It's like a little module that you put on your helmet. So they determine using their sensors that are built in, so accelerometers, even GPS, things like that. So if something happens, a big bang, and then you're not moving, it'll determine that you've been in an incident and it'll give you a certain amount of time. So on Garmin, it's 30 seconds. So you can just cancel that. If, that, if everything's fine, you're okay, cancel that. If not, it will send a message to your emergency contact that you've set up with your device. So you do need a mobile phone paired to that device to be able to send it. There are other ways of sending out emergency alerts from your devices and then they change from phone to phone. But on my Apple iPhone, I hold down the two top buttons and it comes up with this, either turn the uh, phone off or medical ID or emergency SOS. So you can get your blood group, any emergency information, medical information, in there so people can use that if they need it. Also, better cancel that. I'm not in emergency at the moment. I can do the same on my watch. So it's got incident detection. I can turn that on or off for different activities. So I've actually got it set on for run and for road bike and off for mountain biking because sometimes big impacts, if you're riding hard, that can actually set it off and you'll have to cancel it. Also, you have that emergency assistance as well. Basically, I hold down the one button for a certain amount of time, it gives me three vibrations and then it will also send my assistance alert. I'll cancel that quick, I'm fine. All right, so there's a few tips on hopefully how to try safe on the trails. I think common sense is a big one as well, try and keep you out of trouble, but not everyone's born with that, are they, Jack? He's behind the camera, doesn't have any of that. Um, and if you're riding by yourself, definitely think about devices like your phone and maybe your computer could help you out if you really need it. 
Right, if you want to see a guide on what protection to wear, then click over there for that one. Give a thumbs up if you like going home in one piece and subscribe.